Welcome back to my YouTube channel, to my ministry, to my Facebook page, to my Instagram page. Y'all already know. Welcome back. Welcome back to the chat. Welcome back to Deep Diamond Ministry, where we dine within to feed the soul and starve the mind. This ministry is centered around the teachings of Jesus Christ and how he is the bread of life and how we can always take the Bible and apply it to our real life circumstances and situations to feed us and to nourish not only our soul, but also our flesh and everything that we need to walk us into our purpose. So before I get started, I want to pray and we're going to jump straight into this message. So, um, Heavenly Father, Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, I just want to thank you so much for allowing us to be joined here today to hear your word. God, I ask that you humble me, humble me now in your presence. God, allow me to decrease so that you may increase. Allow me to become less so that you may become more. God, I ask that you allow all of us to be within one spirit and one mind and on agreement with each other according to your word and the revelation that you want to give us, God. Speak through me and use me. I am only the vessel. I am not the light. I only come as a witness to the light, God. So allow your light to shine forth into darkness to open the eyes of the blind to open the ears of the deaf to open the mouths of the mute god open the eyes of the understanding of our heart god remove anything that we have placed above your throne according to your will Remove anything that we place on our heart, God, that is above your throne, that we have made an idol out of, God. I want to rebuke every Jezebel spirit, every Leviathan spirit, every spirit of pride, every spirit of slumber and disobedience, God, that may be stopping us from receiving clarity according to your will, God. I ask that you cover this message with your blood, God, and I want to ask that you release a legion of angels, specifically Michael and Gabriel, to contend with the Prince of Persia as I speak this message to bring deliverance to not just myself, but also those who will come in contact with this message, God. I want to Pray for our sins, those known and unknown, God, and I want to declare and decree that today you will wipe away the iniquity of this land, and we will all come together to sit under the vine of each other's blessings, God. I thank you, God, for all that you've done for us, and I seal this prayer with the blood of Jesus. In the last name I pray, amen. Okay, y'all. This is something that God has been putting in my spirit for so, so, so long. All I've been continuously hearing is, how long will you mourn for Saul? How long will you mourn for Saul? How long will you mourn for Saul? Um, this doesn't just have to be, for me, it was considering love. But um, also, God has applied this message in many other areas in my life um, with ministry, with um with ministry, with opportunities, with the path that he's called me to, with um, people and places and certain things that he's called me to be a part of for a season. We have to understand that not everything and not everyone that we meet in our life will go out through, will go with us throughout our whole entire life. Some things are only seasonal, not because of us, but because God sees what's up ahead. In the book of First Samuel, he, there was once a king who was called to basically shepherd and rule over God's kingdom. However, he continued to disobey the commands of the Lord and God ended up ripping his kingdom from him and giving it to a man who had a heart after him right prophet who was called to anoint the next king right he was fearful that Saul would hear about this and that he would begin to come up against him against him and God is basically telling Samuel which is the prophet who anointed Saul as king he's telling him how long will you mourn for that I have rejected how long will you mourn for those who have disobeyed my will how long will you mourn for those who have chosen not to see the God in you how long will you mourn for those who have purposely closed the door on you and so now we're entering into a season to where God is saying, stop mourning for that that I have rejected, whether it's men, whether it's family, whether it's friends, whether it's lovers, whether it's job opportunities, whether it is a path to purpose, whatever it may be. God is saying, how long will you mourn? How long will you mourn for that I have rejected? He's saying, go and I will send you to a man who has my heart and he will shepherd my kingdom. He will rule over my sheep with righteousness and as a shepherd who is called to people, who is called to oversee should. So, um... I'm going to tell about the dream first um, that I had like two days ago. And then I'm going to read um, one chapter and a little bit of First, Sing first Samuel 16. Um, in this dream, it was, it was Lauren London. And she was crying about Nipsey Hussle. There was a man in front of her who was trying to basically court her and bring her in as his new wife. I don't know if it was a wife or girlfriend. Basically, he was seeking her out for love. But Lauren, as we all know, Lauren made her soul, made her heart find peace and rest. And also be able to recover from the things that she has lost. So in the dream, Lauren London, she was so busy crying over Nipsey Hussle that she couldn't. 
couldn't see what was right in front of her. And so the man ends up continuously speaking to her. He was speaking directly to her spirit and he got her to stop crying. And she then was able to see who was in front of him, right? Who was in front of her. And so immediately I woke up and God confirmed this message. How long will you mourn for Saul? How long will you mourn for that I have rejected? How long will you stay stagnant according to the doors that I have closed? Move past that door. It's no longer available for a reason. Now it's time for you to walk through the open door. In Revelation chapter 4, we're going to start with that. So Revelation chapter 4, it says the throne in heaven. After this, I looked and there before me was a door standing open in heaven. And the voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, come up here and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the spirit and there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it. And I'm going to stop right there. That is verse two. But every we have to understand that before God can move us into the open door, he has to close the door of the things that we're not meant to go into. He says, at once I was in the spirit and there before me was a door standing open. And right in front of the, right after I crossed into that door, he said he sees the throne of heaven. So a lot of us can't access the throne of heaven, the kingdom of God, because we're standing at closed doors. We're sitting under ministries. We're sitting under people, under people. We're sitting under jobs. We're going after things that God is saying, how long will you mourn for Saul? How long will you stay at this closed door before you move past it and see what I placed in front of you? So um, now we're going to start with 1 Samuel chapter 16, starting at verse 10. It says, Then the word of the Lord came to Samuel. I regret that I have made Saul king because he has turned away from me and has not carried out my instructions. Samuel was angry and he cried out to the Lord all that night. Early in the morning, Samuel got up and went to meet Saul, but he was told Saul has gone to Carmel. There he has set up a monument in his own honor and has turned and gone on down to Gidral. When Samuel reached him, Saul said, The Lord bless you. I have carried out the Lord's instructions. But Samuel said, What then is this bleating of sheep in my ears? What is this low, lowing of cattle that I hear? Saul answered, The soldiers brought them from the Amalekites. They spared the best of the sheep and cattle to sacrifice to the Lord your God. But we totally destroyed the rest. Enough, Samuel said to Saul. Let me tell you what the Lord said to me last night. I'm going to pause right here for a second because the reason why Saul was being rejected was because God continuously was telling him to go over and to overtake everything that was in front of him. But Saul saw fit to receive from what he was supposed to be overtaking. He saw fit to receive see when God was saying do not show any mercy you are to devour their spoil you are to devour their cattle you are to devour their men and their women you are to utterly destroy them and even when the prophet comes back to correct him he's now in the current stance of now shifting the blame to those who are supposed to be operating under him when you're called to leadership you don't get to shift the blame to those who are under you because it was your job to lead so now we're in a season to where God is saying if you're not going to obey my command if you're not going to do everything that I cause you to do I can't use you. And that's why Samuel is rejecting him ultimately because this isn't the first time, but God has continuously been telling Saul, overtake everything that I send you into, right? And so um, we're going to keep going at verse 17. Samuel said, although you were once small in your own eyes, did you not become the head of the tribes of Israel? The Lord anointed you king over Israel, and he sent you on a mission saying, go and completely destroy those wicked people. The Amalekites wage war against them until you have wiped them out. Why did you not obey this This." Why did you not obey the Lord? Why did you pounce on the plunder and do evil in the eyes of the Lord? But I did obey the Lord, Saul said. I went on the mission the Lord assigned me. I completely destroyed the Amalekites and brought back Agag, their king. The soldiers took sheep and cattle from the plunder, the best of what was devoted to God, in order to sacrifice them to the Lord your God at Gidel. But Samuel replied, Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much in obeying the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of rams. For rebellion is like the sin of divination, and arrogance like the evil of idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. Then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned. I violated the Lord's command and your instructions. I was afraid of the men, and so I gave in to them. Now I beg you, forgive my sin and come back with me so that I may worship the Lord. But Samuel said to him, I will not go back with you. You have rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord has rejected you as king. 
king over Israel. As Samuel turned to leave, Saul caught hold of the hem of his robe and tore it, and it tore. Samuel said to him, The Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you today and has given it to the one given it to one of your neighbors, to one better than you. He who is the glory of Israel does not lie or change his mind, for he is not a human being that he should change his mind. Saul replied, I have sinned, but please honor me before the elders of my people and before Israel. Come back with me so that I may worship the Lord your God. So Samuel went back with Saul and Saul worshiped the Lord. Then Samuel said, bring me Agag, king of the Amalekites. Agag came to him in chains and he thought, surely the bitterness of death is past. But Samuel said, as your sword has made women childless, so will your mother be childless amongst women. And Samuel put Agag to death before the Lord at Gidrel. Then Samuel left for but Saul went up to his home in Gibbeth, in Gibbeth of Saul. Until the day Samuel died, he did not go to see Saul again. Though Samuel mourned for him, and the Lord regretted that he had made Saul king over Israel. First Samuel chapter 16, Samuel anoints David. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul since I have rejected him as king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. But Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears about it, he will kill me. The Lord said, Take a heifer, heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what to do. You are to anoint for me the one I indicate. And I stop at 1 Samuel 16 and three so basically god um rewrote samuel who was the prophet who was originally chosen to cover saul as he was going into the battle as he was going into his purpose he rewrote him and says how long will you mourn for saul go fill your horn with oil i'm sending you to anoint the man who has a heart after me and so a lot of us are in a season to where god is saying no longer mourn for that i have rejected go and fill your horn with oil with the oil of christ and go forth into the go forth into the path the purpose the ministry the leadership that god is calling you to anoint what has god closed in your life and what is he what is he opening in your life if you are not sure ask god to open your eyes and open your ears as well as open your heart you may need to go on a fast you may need to go on a fast to hear God more clearly or to receive clear instructions or to receive what God has for you so um yeah, that's it, y'all. We're not we're no longer mourning for dead things in our life. If we're gonna be fruitful, we have to make sure that there is no barren fruit amongst us. We must all be in the same mind. We must all be in the same spirit. Amos three and three says, Can two walk together unless they agree? If you are walking with somebody who has agreed to walk with the enemy, you cannot walk with them. God is saying, How long will you mourn for Saul? Go and fill your horn with oil, for I have found a man after my heart. So that's it, y'all. Um, God loves you. He doesn't want you at closed doors. He wants you to be fruitful and to be prosperous. So um, I pray that this message gave somebody the deliverance that they need. And I pray that God um, continues to guide you in your way according to ministry, according to your purpose, according to the path that he's called you to. And whatever it is that he wants you to do and walk in in this season. Um, yeah, God, God loves you. I love you. Peace, prosperity, and abundance.